Selma and today we're looking into one of the most famous and intriguing monarchs in history, Elizabeth I. Her legacy and the stories surrounding her continue to capture people's imagination to this day in museums like the Queen's House behind me, books and even films. Here's what we've learned so far. I think that there are many words to describe the Amada portrait that universally come to mind for the majority of people, such as patriarchy, power, feminism and wealth. Elizabeth I was born into a dangerous world of cutthroat politics as the daughter of Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII and ruled over England as Queen from 1558 to 1603. She was seen as a strong, intelligent and fearsome leader who used her grasp of languages to negotiate with other countries. But unfortunately, when those negotiations failed, she proved she was adept at inspiring her troops with rousing speeches. One of her most famous speeches is the Tilbury speech delivered in 1588 to rally the troops and defeat the Spanish Armada. It sounded something like this. I know they have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but have the heart and the stomach of a king, and a king of England too, and think foul scorn that Parma or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm. Here at the Queen's House, we have a very famous painting, um, which is called the Armada Portrait, which depicts um, Elizabeth I. And so I was wondering um, what your thoughts were about this portrait. Yeah, well, thanks, Julia. I've been researching it since uh, the beginning of 2020 when I created a performance about it. The image, which is almost like a sort of religious icon of Queen Elizabeth I, gives us an opportunity to think about power relations in the early modern uh, era. What we know about the portrait is that it was probably painted around 1588, which was when the Armada, in the Armada portrait, refers to the Spanish Armada of ships that basically came to attack England and Spain had sort of declared war on England. This is an image which is about the body politic of the Queen of England. She is kind of sat in the middle of the portrait and she has these kind of two contrasting views behind her. So on the one side, you have the English ships who are sailing in good weather and everything is calm. And on the left-hand side, you have the Spanish ships being crashed against the rocks. And the implication is this is God's will. God has chosen to to favour the English and God ha is supporting the English. It's also saying that she is a queen. What stands out the most is that she's in the centre of the painting and she's filled with like pearls around, like on her, around her, on her hair, her dress. I would use the words important and commanding, influential, stoic and calm. Luxury and independence. This is a painting that's absolutely packed with symbolism. It's a, it's a painting that's kind of designed to be read. You know, we can kind of work our way across and that we're almost sort of reading a document. If we start at the top, you know, we start with the face. The face, you know, has this kind of white makeup, but there's also a sort of luminosity to it that her, People have said that her face was almost like the moon. If you think about someone like Beyonce, who is just so good at constructing an image, but it's so dynamic, you know, her body is so, so much part of her power. Whereas if you look at this portrait of Elizabeth, she's kind of loaded with all of this stuff, you know, that's kind of weighing her down. And she's almost sort of, ethereal and as as she gets older that kind of happens that her her real fragile body she sort of distances herself further and further from that 
One of the big symbols in the painting for me is the, is the globe and uh, Elizabeth has a hand over the top of Latin America. It was a symbol of colonial intention. There was 20 pearls in her, in her hair and her embroidery around her neck, there was 20 pointed parts of that. And they were kind of symmetrical in a crescent way. And this crescent shape points to kind of, I guess, the moon. The moon is a celestial body and points to these larger aspects than herself. It's all kind of alluding to this idea of power, you know, that, that how do you communicate to the world that you are powerful? I think in that portrait she had to show herself as um, very powerful to calm the, the, the people, to make sure they felt secure in her reign as a, as a woman in control. You know, she's just taken over from her father Henry VIII and she wants to make sure they feel that she can be trusted, that she can lead them to a, a brighter future, a greater future. I really see the, the mermaid as this symbol of queerness that's hidden in the, in the portrait and they're not a mermaid, they're mere folk. You know, they could be, they could be any gender, we don't know, so let's say mere folk uh, instead. I think the starting point for decoding is always about looking and, and thinking about where your eye falls and then asking questions. It's about asking, what does this mean? Where does this come from? Um, so when you look at a painting, what do you see? What does it symbolise? What does it make you think of? What, what is it like? Is there anything you can pull from your world that you think I, that's, that's kind of recognisable?